Hi everyone, just introducing my latest video. Coming up, I'm meeting Bruce just tomorrow morning. That's Bruce Phoenix from the UK Night Vision Forum, link down below. Meeting him for the first time after a long time because of umpteen lockdowns. I'm going to film his review of three different thermal scopes. Uh, two are dedicated scopes, one's a thermal front end add on, and we've got lots more content coming from uh, myself and Bruce soon. I also have two torch review videos coming up, plus a new air rifle two new air pistols oh I'm drooling now at the thought of them really looking forward to reviewing these guys for you i've also got a mainspring to change out in my fx dreamline bottle pop 22 fac with the instructions thanks to sportsman gun center and johan axelson thanks very much johan for your help the reason i'm changing the mainspring is to get a bit more oomph out of it for testing with fx hybrid slugs regular 15.89 grain JSB exacts and heavyweight 18.13 grain JSB exacts to see how these fellas compare for downrange ac accuracy and in particular for longer range accuracy because ultimately I'm after long range bunny headshots. Speaking of long range uh, pest control, I bought myself a Bog Death Ultralight saddle for the top of my Primos trigger sticks. So for now I've dismounted the regular V yoke from the top via the larger thread. I've just screwed in the ultralight saddle in place of it and you'll see that in this video. Thanks again to uh, Sportsman Gun Center for stocking this great kit and when I'm doing my long range slug testing with the bottle pup at higher powers I'll be using this fella on a, a big chunky heavyweight camera tripod just for a bit more stability. So this video accompanies my next that's June Airgun World article, and this is primarily a pest control video. My apologies for those who are not into the pest control. Please, if you, if you stay subscribed and uh, hang on, I've got lots more kit review videos coming out, as you can tell, be it accessories, add-ons, IR torches, night vision add-ons, there's another one of them coming up shortly, and uh, loads of other stuff. But this particular video is all about humane pest control. Thanks to Davey, cheers mate, he put me in touch with a gamekeeper up north and uh, I've been there twice now. So this video is a visit to accompany the gamekeeper. The first visit was, it was howling gale, horizontal snow blowing through. So I was accompanied by the gamekeeper around one of his permissions. I got some dues, that's the vernacular Abedonian for uh, feral pigeons. They spoil everywhere, animal feed and, uh, and so on by uh, crapping everywhere, spreading disease. They carry nearly as many diseases as brown rats. The farmer and the gamekeeper have to control them. So I was helping out a gamekeeper up north with that. Then I popped back to Gark and one of my local permissions to do some fine tuning zeroing with my FX bottle pop. And then I, the second time I popped back up to assist the gamekeeper, he used the bottle FX bottle pop, turned down to minimum down to 12 foot pounds. And uh, you'll see the uh, yellow crosshair reticle for the shots that he took. So thank you very much to the gamekeeper. I'll see you again soon. Interspersed through the through the pest control footage, you'll see thermal footage captured with my uh, Pulsar Light XQ30V thermal spotter with a Yukon MPR recorder hooked up. I don't think either of these are on sale anymore. Comparatively speaking, this is now relatively uh, old tech. The resolution's not great. What I have done is stretch the footage slightly to correct the ratio so hopefully circles are circular and such like. And of course, as always, I've corrected, de-stretched the PAR 00A LRF footage from 1920 by 1080 back to 1440 by 1080, back to 4-3 ratio. So hopefully we won't get any uh, rats or pigeons complaining that uh, they look fat on the footage. Hope you enjoy the video. Right, so Russ Douglas 222 on a new permission with uh, Nathan by side, thank you very much. And we checked one shed and there's not a rat or a feral in it. But here I can see a feral. There's a feral... Ah, there it is. Distance. Right, let's get focused. Distance 26 metres. Safety off. There's a cable 
conduit behind it, so I'll go for a chest shot. Yep. Alright, so, Beastie's in the shed. This is the barn where I just shot the feral up there. So one less feral, and we're in the second barn. On the right here, but up in the rafters, there's no signs of life. So, another barn. And there's some cattle. That's proof that the thermal's working. There's Nathan, glowing with a cold nose. So let's set check up in the eaves here. Oh, the only heat there is in the eaves is the light bulb. Right. Hello, beasties. See the heads of them are in the, over the wall in the far shed. Uh, any ferals keeping you company in here, I wonder. Right, let's have a look over here. Oh, that might be a feral. It can be fine from here, but just need to lean against this column. You need trigger sticks when you've got columns everywhere. And I've just got a, I've got two and a half mag zoom on this XQ30V spotter, so I'm looking at the apex down two beams. It's on the right hand side of that beam. Alright, back on the pad. Focus. Up to the apex, down two beams. Ah, that's a feral in a nest, I think. You can just see its head it's blinking at me. Again, 25 and a half metres, so near enough dead on. Down it goes. Yeah, that could be a pair of birds with the backs to me. I can just see the tail feathers, you know, they're a little bit of warmth. Uh, up a bit. There, there. What is that? Recording again. This is a different permission, and it's what half an hour away. Yeah. And we've got more beasts, but we also have three fowls. Four. Let's drop these first, and then we'll have a little more of a look around. There's three other sheds to look around. So, time to oh, let's have a look around. Animals' legs. No, no sign of any rats. Just the focus. Right, three ferals, close proximity to each other. 30 metres, that's spot on. That was 35. My zero with this rifle is 30 metres. That's one. Headshot and it's just uh, and it's down. All right, so that was three ferals down. Ah, and the one in the middle is gone. A lot of beasts probably trampling the three that are just shot. All right, it's a different shed, and there are two distant heat sources. They're not massive, so they might not be ferals. There's a biting North Sea wind blowing right to left, so we're quite close to the sea. Alright, that's a feral over there. Now it's 45 metres away. I'm, uh, I'm not going to get that with this wind. Alright, so a different barn. We've got a pile of barley glowing away here. Looking around above us. Aha! We have some birds. Oh, and there's another one over there on the left. These are probably going to be too close to aim with a scope, so I'll use the lasers. Where are the 
is up here. Oh yeah, there we go. Back in the first shed on this third permission. And how far away is that feral? Oh, someone just licked my shoulder. Maybe one of the cows. It's only 10 metres away, so this is another laser's job. Completely freehand. Alright, so I'm on my local permission again, and the bales are all, almost all gone. No sound of any pigeons yet. Oh, there's one above me. And two rats over there. So I've moved a few paces to the left and yep, there is one rat over there. Nothing else visible so far. I don't know where the second rat went. So I did it in a second of that. Okay, next door in the grain barn, there's some bales. Did I go to that then? A lot of the grain is gone. There's some bales still on the right. Oh, yes, there's a rat there. I'm going to go further into the barn in a minute and see if I can see this wrap. But meanwhile, let's just have a quick look at these two birds and double check that they are only songbirds.
Right, so Gus Douglas 232 again, here on a, uh, a different farm on the new permission, different barns, just scanning with the thermal. There's bee beasts in all these pens, cattle, and uh, so we ain't going to be retrieving any ferals or rats that fall down into these pens. The weather's a lot kinder tonight, so it's not, not snowing, and hopefully we'll... Oh, right, well, there's three, three or four ferals I can see at the gable end. Is it, no, I think there's half a dozen ferals in there actually. This is Nathan just in the colour of his reticle from red to yellow. So here's his yellow on his par double LRF. Mine's red on the same scope. I'm using the non FAC 177 FX Wildcat. So, yes, well, it should be with a, a Hug It Magna on the front. So this is Gamekeeper using the Dreamline Bottle Pop waving at you. It's on profile E on the scope, zeroed at 25 metres, and it's on minimum on the power wheel, so it's on 12.1 foot-pounds. But we'll only be shooting if we've got a solid steel backstop or chest shots for the birds, basically, so we don't damage any soft roofs. Right, here we are. This is a lap of luxury. I'm sitting on a bucket seat with my rifle cradled in the bog ultralight saddle. Let's try that pigeon far left. If I'm thinking the, the, the back stop's safe, I'll do headshots, otherwise, I'll do heart and lung shots. Oh, better range it as well. 29.7 metres. It's spot on for a 30 metre zero, hopefully. One down. Oh, another one has just stepped out from behind the adjacent post. Okay, well hopefully they'll all stay within the shed. And that's where one of them has landed. 27.7 metres. So the IR's on 940. But the lights are on in this shed, so I'm going to put it on 850. Brighter. So you don't have to worry about spooking the birds. Uh, yeah, that's much better. So it's pivoted on the X Knight clamp. Bird number two down, and it landed in a trough. Mm -hmm. The cows have all gone over to. Oh right. So. <laughs> so the cows have all gone over. The rifle is uncocked, by the way, Mr. Viewer. So the rifle cows have gone over to investigate what the splash was in their water trough. So the birds have been flown away. We're now perusing the next few sheds to find where they've gone to. Um, there's a lot of lights on in these sheds, which are 24/7, and all, as you can see, there's some beasties. So on to the next shed. So I think the do nate's going for probably about 15 meters, if that. Okay, so I would maybe aim slightly high, just a little bit of holdover. So maybe aim a half an inch high. And it's lifted its head to see what's going on. Give you a bigger target. Nice one. Okay, another shed, and three dues, 29.7 metres, spot on the zero again. I'm just going to sit down and take these three out. So, to prolong the battery life on the PAR AA LRF, I've got a Brynite T28 torch mounted just offset on the rail. Oh, that's going to take the safety off. I'm going for the top one.
thank you for watching. In addition to the items I mentioned at the start of the video, there's a list coming up in a second of other topics that I've got on, I'm working on at the moment. Also, if you, if you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe, ring the bell, share it, let your friends know, spread the word. Really appreciate that. And uh, can you double check if you're a subscriber in the past, double check that you're still subscribed because one or two friends have, have let me know that they've been unsubscribed unwillingly. So, and they've now resubscribed. So I don't know whether it's something uh, wrong with YouTube, who knows, but uh, if you could check that and uh, be lots more content coming soon. Take care all and enjoy your shooting. Oh, and uh, I gained a little souvenir from uh, my uh, trusty uh, crutch slipped on some mud or cow poo on, in the farmyard on uh, this new permission up north beside the gamekeeper. And uh, he helped me up. Thank you very much again. And uh, I gained uh, a bit of a cut and uh, <laughs> Friends have pointed out there's a, a friend of mine who nicknames me Action Man because of all the stuff I try and get up to. And uh, another friend, Ken, has uh, commented that Action Man had the scar in the same place. So, freakily, he does. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. See you all again soon.